Hi and welcome to our latest Lent Reflection, the first in Holy Week. As we enter Holy Week, I'm going to change tack over the next few days and we're going to explore some of the events of the period leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus by engaging the senses. And there will be a different sense that is the focus of our reflection each day. Today we go to a dinner and to an extravagant act of worship which engages the sense of smell. We find it in John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. What's your favourite smell? Smells can stir up powerful emotions and memories. It's said that if you're wanting to sell a house, the smell of baking bread can create a real sense of home. Aromas can have the power to transport you back to a certain time or place. And it was the sense of smell that was engaged in this morning's reading. I did a little bit of hunting around. A quick Google search, to be honest, to see what pure nard was. It seems it was an essential oil with a rich, deep, earthy, wooden scent. And the writer of the, bro of the blog I checked out suggested it's a pleasing aroma, but it's best to use sparingly so as not to overpower other smells. Mary seems to have had no such qualms. When she was done, the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But what was it for? Interestingly, it's used to relax people in states of agitation, to promote peace and tranquility, to help soothe a troubled soul. And perhaps here we get something of the love with which this is applied. John locates the scene about six days before Passover, just before Jesus enters Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Whereas Matthew and Mark place it a few days later. Either way, perhaps already the sense of what lies ahead of Jesus of what is to come is still weighing heavily, already weighing heavily on him. As everyone is reclined, relaxed at dinner, perhaps some laughter, maybe Lazarus chokes on a bit of food and someone jokes about, oh, don't go dying on us again, Lazarus. But amongst the camaraderie, the joviality, the sense of excited anticipation of a coming festival, Mary senses something else is going on. 
something deeper. Maybe Jesus just isn't as full of laughter as he usually is. Maybe the turmoil in the heart of Jesus as he reflects on the, this place of relaxation, this might be one of the last times, if not the last time he's here. And Mary senses something. And she offers what she's got to soothe the overburdened mind and mood of her Lord. To bring relaxation to his mind. To rejuvenate the body. Extravagant. It's quite a loaded word, isn't it? It can come with some quite negative connotations. This shirt that I'm wearing comes from a company in the Netherlands. And I have a friend who's from that part of the world. And about a year ago, when I, when I first sort of got this and another shirt there, I, I was telling her I'd ordered a shirt from them. And she responded, oh, that's really extravagant. And at first I was like, oh, that's not like her. But English isn't her first language and what she really meant was that they were known for quite vibrant, vivid patterns and designs. But until she actually explained that's what she was talking about, I was initially quite on the defensive. Extravagant has that kind of power as a word. And maybe that was how Mary was made to feel as Judas remarks on what a waste of money this was. Could she not have sold the proceeds and, or sold the perfume and given the proceeds to the poor? Sounds quite reasonable and pious. I imagine quite a few of us would be thinking something similar. But Mary was on to something here. For Jesus had done something amazing for her. He had given her her brother back when she thought he was gone forever. When she thought of what Jesus had done for her, nothing was too good for Jesus. So she poured out her all until the fragrance of her offering filled the whole place. That's a beautiful image of worship. In our lower church traditions, we don't engage senses as such. We uh, say higher Church traditions would use incense maybe more. But the notion of aroma or smell as a sign of worship would have made sense to John's readers. Smoke rising from the altar, the smells of their sacrifice, they were a key part of their worship experience. The sense we're supposed to get here that the awe and worship of Mary Fill that house. Does our worship fill whatever space we inhabit? As we enter this Holy Week, we have the opportunity to reflect on what God has done for us in Jesus. We're given the chance to remember a love so amazing, so divine. Perhaps as we tread this road to this Holy Week, we can grasp something of that sense of wonder and love and come to realise we have a God who loves us so much and is truly worthy of the best that we can bring, that nothing will be too good for him. Nothing we bring will ever be greater than what he has given to us. So perhaps today, as you go about your business, you notice any pleasing aromas. Remember a woman who gave her best in worship so that the smell of her offering Fill the place. And may we be inspired to offer our all too.
Grace and peace be with you. Have a blessed day.